Sunshine and Rainbows. Hey, you're listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast, episode 58. I'm Dave. And I'm Donna. And hey, we're here talking with who, Donna? Mr. Greg Hawks, the secret sauce of the cars and beyond. Hi, I'm Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Very good, Greg. I'm thinking Greg's just really, he's been on here twice, and I think he's um, gunning for my job, Donna. (laughs) Somehow, I doubt it. (laughs) Yeah. Greg Hawks, co-host, has a nice ring to it, doesn't he? Yeah, that's a job you haven't done yet. Yeah, and I'm willing to bet you'd have less people mad at you like I am (laughs) all the time. Well, hey, Donna, before before we get started, Donna, Uh I would like to say that you know, people have been wondering where we've been because, um, heck, I can't even remember how long it's been since we've did, done an episode. Me personally, I've been wandering in the desert looking. <laughs> wow, nice. Looking for RTB's secret hovel that he had <laughs> in the desert. So that's that's what I've been doing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's what awesome. about you, Don? Yeah. Uh, what have I been doing? I've been running herd on my kids and uh, just trying to keep my head above water. It's been busy around here, and you know I have one less ovary now, so, you know, oh. there's that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't have a picture of it on your family room wall now, do you? Or I have a picture of it. I don't have it on the do wall, you? but yeah. Oh, do you, do you seriously have a picture of your lost ovary? I really do, and I don't mean to get off on a total <laughs> rabbit trail, but because... <laughs> It, you know those um, those suckers you can get like at amusement parks that are the the candies like twisted around a spiral yeah. of a stick. That is what my fallopian tube looked like. Wow! It was twisted four times, and they're amazed wow. that I. Honestly, they were amazed that I didn't die because normally wow. that cuts off the blood did. flow. And well, thanks. I'm glad I didn't too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah wow. Man. So basically, I... you've got your Christmas photo all set up for your cards this year. <laughs> Greg can't wait to get that one in the mail, huh, Greg? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, moving on to the questions. Yeah. (laughs) Well, Greg, I I don't know if you know this now, but you know Donna, the the sweet purple June, Mm -hmm. uh, as I call her. She, um, you know, she she brings the sunshine and the rainbow, (laughs) rainbows to this podcast, and you you know, Donna. I think I speak for the entire fanorama when I say that you light up my life. What? You give me hope, Donna, to carry oh, on. Stop. You light up my days. All right. And, 
you fill my nights <laughs> with sunshine and rainbows. Oh, my gosh. All right. Well, I do what I can. Yeah. So. Yeah, you light up my life. Which, by the way, Greg, wasn't the, didn't like didn't John Denver sing that to you at a Grammy <laughs> thing or something? You know, I think he was singing it to my wife who was sitting next to me. Really? <laughs> wow. That, that's my story. That's you, a fight I would have wanted to see after the Grammys right there. Greg and, and John Denver. Going at it. Uh, going at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think he was uh, I think he was singing to Elaine. <laughs> And who can blame him, really? She's yeah, such a lovely you. person. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, she is. All right. I agree. So um, we're going to be going along with what we posted on our Facebook page. We we left it open for uh, people in the Fanorama to ask questions. Um, uh, a little disclaimer, we, we couldn't ask them all because there was over about 150. Um, we're wow. not going to. Greg sit through 150 questions, but we kind of weeded it down and, and got it down to about 25, 30 or so. And um, we're just going to go from there. Okay. okay. So, Donna, would you like to uh, start I will, off? I will, sure. Well, Ladies. thank you. I wanted to say, Greg, I know you've been so busy. You've been touring with Todd Rundgren. You've done some shows with Eddie Japan. Last night you were with Letters to Cleo, I understand, as a special guest. Yeah. And yes. actually I was bummed because you were in my area. You played in um, Skagit Valley um, or Skagit County. Oh, yeah, just just a week. Uh, was it last weekend? A week yeah. Ago? yeah, last yeah. weekend. And I, that's to me, it's it's about a seven hour drive, but we we drive to that area quite a bit. We have family over there, and I wish so bad I could have gone. My kids were in a play here, so it was production weekend for us. There was no way. Uh, but when I realized, oh my gosh, Greg was so close to me, and I didn't get to go, that was a bummer, especially because yeah, I I guess I don't. I'm not that good about posting everything. Where, <laughs> I'll where come you're going? I'm so so. Well, and it was a bummer because when we were in Boston in June for the book event, I thought for sure, oh, you know, we'll be able to see Greg then. But at that time, you were, I think, in Texas with Todd Rundgren. So uh -huh. we just missed each uh -huh. other there, too. So that was kind of a bummer. But um, what else do you have going? I mean, clearly, your schedule is packed. Do you guys have more shows coming up with Todd or uh, Eddie Japan? Hey. Going on. Well, let's see. Uh, uh, first, with Todd, I do have a, uh, a tour upcoming in the spring, and uh, it'll be like uh, May and June. Nice. Uh, in the States so far. Hello. Is that Elaine? Uh, yeah, I'm just oh. giving Greg a blanket. <laughs> that is precious. Hi, Elaine. Because he's not allowed to smoke in the house, you see. Oh. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving to you. Oh, and there's the dog. Is that Moxie? Yeah. Hi, Moxie. <laughs> She's like, what the heck? What a good girl. Yes, you are. Oh, who's a good girl? Oh, <laughs> oh Greg. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so you've got uh, Rundgren coming up in the spring. Are you off for the holidays then? Uh... Yeah, that I and and uh, uh, let's see what else. I am going to do a couple more of, of those uh, appearances with Eddie Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, one was just announced. Actually, I was surprised. Uh, <laughs> but the, in March, in in I think Pawtucket, Rhode Island. Oh yeah, I uh, saw that. And uh, and we're going to do a short set in December at the Boston Music Awards show. Oh, nice. Uh, it, yeah. You're doing that so, with Todd Rundgren or you're doing that with Eddie no, Japan? No, that's with that's with Eddie Japan as well. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. And then like you said, I last night I sat in with uh, Letters to Cleo at the Paradise Theater, which mm. is the you know, the cars played there, boy, right when the first album came out. Mm -hmm. And and actually before the first album came out, but then again when it actually came out. Nice. So it's one of my old haunts, I guess. Yeah, for sure. And that show went well. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I, you know, I just, I, we did three songs, two car songs and a Letters to Cleo song. Nice. That I had actually uh, recorded with them uh, previously. Oh yeah, plus they recorded that version. They recorded that version of uh, uh, "Dangerous Type." Yeah. For the movie "The Craft." Mm-hmm. Yeah. And was that set? For some reason, I was thinking I read that that set was like a tribute to Rick. Yeah, I guess you know Kay. I think mentioned you know just something before we started mm-hmm. playing. So you know we were talking about it you know, a bit last night. Yeah. Yeah. That was a shock, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, Totally crazy. You know, it was, it was, it was just bizarre. Had you spoken Uh, to him since the rock hall stuff? I had not. Mm. So that's, that's the last time that we uh, spoke. And the last time I saw him was at the uh, hall of fame ceremony. Wow. Just, uh, so there you go. What a way to, uh, in, in some ways, it's like a such an apt ending. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's just, you know, pretty, I don't know what to say about it still. You know, yeah. I, I still, uh, uh, when, because when he first died, I got a lot of calls from the press and I didn't answer any of them. Mm. And uh, I did do a, a thing, an interview with Rolling Stone, but it was a couple of weeks had gone by mm. by then. And I thought, uh, yeah, I thought, you know, that would be a good one to do. Yeah. So, yes. uh, and Elliot did it too. So, uh, so we're both, we both got some quotes in there. Yeah. I remember reading that one. Yeah. No, it's it, it's been such a the last two years have been such a roller coaster ride of emotion for yeah. for people in the panorama. I mean, we had the um, we had the Rock Hall last year, and you know the, we had the uh, Ben Orr book by Joe Milliken that was um, getting some exposure, and then this year we had more book events for for Joe that a lot of the fans got together, and then you know the passing of Rick. So. It's it's been quite a whirlwind for yeah yeah for fans and you know people involved. Yeah yeah I know I know uh, totally crazy, but I'm re- I am really uh, happy and I guess thankful that we you know we're we're the, all there for the rock hall thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I know it was uh, it was just a good. Uh, uh, I guess finale, I guess, for for lack of a better word. Mm. Yeah, it's an, an apt. Ending. I mean, uh, yeah, I can't think of a better word, really, you know. But. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm so sorry for your loss, Greg. Yeah. I, uh, well, I know that it had to be a, a huge you. blow. Yeah, yeah. It, it uh, I know, it just, you yeah. know, it, it just makes you reflect on, you know, the passing of time and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's been a reflective time. I bet, yeah. For but uh, but I, on you know, I even like Kay Kay Hanley from from Letters to Cleo was was talking about just how much of an outpouring of love there was for Rick, mm-hmm. uh, you know, from from everybody. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And even even in my my own workplace in my school, I'm a teacher. I would I would be walking down the hall and teachers would say, "Hey, Dave, sorry sorry for your loss." And I'd stop and go, "What? Oh, oh, well, thank you." Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, for them to acknowledge that just because they knew I was such a big fan, it's incredible. You just don't see that very often. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, people in the limelight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, without sounding you know, too creepy. It does uh-huh. make me just want to tell you, Greg, that you are so loved. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're so loved. And we, you know, all of us in the Fanorama, you know, we want you to be immortal, <laughs> but we know you're not. And so please. How know. do you know he's not working on that, Donna? Because <laughs> we know only Keith Richards will live forever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Really. <laughs> Um, But just know that, Greg, you are so loved, so, so loved, and you've impacted so many people's lives, and um, you should hear that now before 
<laughs> before well, you yeah, go. They, <laughs> which I which I might add, here's a good time to put this in, Donna. Our buddy Brett Bassel. Yes. Great. Oh, You've yes. influenced our buddy Brett Bassel. Awesome. And who else, Donna? Mr. Dante Tomaselli. Uh huh. One of our favorites. Sure enough. Yep. Nice. Yes. 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 And Eric and, Barrow. And Eric. Oh Barrow. yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. There we, there we go. They got their plug in. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Fantastic. Well, hey, I'll I'll shift the uh, shift the gears here. Um, okay. Greg, when we did episode thirty one with you, I swear uh-huh. Donna Donna and I got done with that episode, and there were so many times we went, "Oh man, why didn't we ask him this or that?" Uh-huh. Or and this is the one that's been been burning through my brain um, okay. to, to ask you is. Um, the song "It's All I Can Do" is is a favorite. It's a fan favorite, uh-huh. and it's never been played live or had any recordings of it. And I know Elliot has said that it wasn't a band favorite. And so I was just wondering if, if you can give us an idea why wasn't it a band favorite? Why didn't the band like to play it? I don't know. I can I, I can tell you from my perspective. For some reason, it's one of my least favorite car songs. Really? Uh, Greg Hawks, how can you say that? I, Your part in it is yep. so beautiful. Oh, He's my so, gosh. The so, keys are... Yeah. Whenever possibly the subject of playing... You know, we did play it live for a while. Uh, when you when it first was released as a single or whatever? Yeah. What's it, what's it on? The Shake It Up album? Is that right? Candio. No, it's not Candio. Oh, Candio. Candio's earlier, earlier. Uh... Yeah, I, I, I'm sure we played it on the Candio tour then, and uh, boy, I'm trying to remember. We might have even played that song a little bit before the can, you know, like on the first year with the first record, because it seemed like I'm. I kind of remember playing that song a little bit. It's funny, yeah. Like Roy Thomas Baker loved it. Uh, that was one of his favorites. Uh, it, I don't know. There's just something to me. I don't know. I don't know why. What it is. I don't know what it yeah. is. Uh, that's so that's weird. so funny that, I, that you I, say I, you don't uh, like your part. I am unhappy. I'm unhappy with my own keyboard playing in that song. What? Uh, that's that's like one thing that I, you know, would sort of. You know, if you can go back and do do overs, you know that that you know. But I don't know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I yeah. don't know. There's. I'm just not. I don't know. That's so there precious, you go. I have one no of those defense. things, Greg. That if we were in person, full defense for it. Other than, uh, <laughs> and if, and I and I'll tell you, it goes on because uh, you know these shows that I've been doing, uh, the couple of shows with Eddie Japan. Uh, when they sent me a list of possible songs, it's all I can do is on the list. But you know, in keeping with tradition, I vetoed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> say, goodness! Greg, oh, that's just so oh, bizarre. So interesting. Yeah, isn't it funny? Yeah. <laughs> it is okay. Well, and so because I have declared in my writing that your keyboard part in that second chorus is probably one of the most romantic. Uh-huh. parts you've done for the cars i mean it's it's so beautiful the way it builds yeah. and behind ben's vocal it's stunning ah, i'm shocked uh-huh. shocked well well thanks, thanks. <laughs> i'm you telling can... you you'd be getting this donna shoulder beat down right now if she was there with... <laughs> well let me ask you this really quick okay because there's a rumor that oh it was you know ben didn't like it because it reminded him of some unrequited love or broken relationship or something anything like that i don't i don't know anything about that okay just want to lay that to uh, rest and not that it is not that it isn't possible but i i know nothing of that all right yeah. <laughs> well good yeah yeah i don't know uh wow i'll leave it to somebody else to revive it all right <laughs> well the band moving in stereo have you heard you met oh you met matt fuller yeah and Nick- yeah Oh, he does an amazing job of well, yes, they does. the whole band is incredible. Uh-huh, um, they're uh-huh. the best, the best cover band I've ever heard, and they, uh, 
Greg. Even Dave, David Robinson was at the book event in Boston and moving in stereo played there. And he was just, he had so many great things to say to the band members about their accuracy and just how they recreated the music. It's amazing. So anyway, Matt Fuller does a great, a great version of It's All I Can Do. Uh-huh. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I was going to say, Donna, we have our we have our, our list of questions from our listeners. Yes, we better. Um, and okay. we're going to go through there, and, and we'll say the name of the person uh, giving the question because, you know, to give them a little thrill mm-hmm. to have their name said to Greg. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but there, there was one up here at the top, Donna, that I think was yours about the uh, badges for the future. Oh. Is that your well, yes. <laughs> Greg, I don't know if you remember, but I think it was, was it the Agora show? Sometime way back in like 78. On a live recording, you shouted out, badges for the future for everyone. Wow. wow. <laughs> and I want to know what that means. Cause yeah, boy, you... darn if I know. <laughs> I, you, know <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I, I really think, I was even wondering about what badge for the future meant. And I, I didn't have any personal recollection that it might have been something that I had actually said. Uh, but, it, but there you go. From the Agora? I think it was is the it Agora the, show. The live at Agora album? Yeah. There, is it? Yeah, I think so. What? Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It's always huh. been a what? What is he saying, and what does he mean by yeah. that? Because we all it's want just, one. It's yeah. just, it just sounds like one of those absurd statements <laughs> yeah. I might have made from time to time. <laughs> Things are just popping out of Greg's mouth. It's yeah. kind of like, uh, you know, a lot of people think that. All the little, you know, beeps and boops and and hidden things you can find in in songs. They're thinking that you're doing that electronically. No, that's just Greg. He's just saying stuff. <laughs> yes. yeah. But I will tell you, I don't know. I can't remember if I've ever told this story or whether I told it before last time. If I did, I'll tell it again. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of bleeps and 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 little sounds. On on I'm in touch with your world. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a line. Uh, uh, da, 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 uh, everything is science fiction, and I ought to know. Mm-hmm. You know that line. Yeah. Okay. So uh, <laughs> apparently that I that's what I had been hearing. That's what I thought Rick had been singing. So that's why I put in that little electronic. Yeah. in there but it wasn't until we got into the studio uh for the first album and rick went out to actually sing the lead vocal for i'm in touch with your world it wasn't till then i that i could hear that what he had actually was singing was everything you say is fiction and i ought to know and so wow that was like a revelation to me. <laughs> So, you know, it's like one of those things where you mishear something and you, and you think of so. So I went out and sort of said, wow, you know, Rick, I, I always thought you were singing this. And, and so, you know, and that's why I even put the sound. And he just sort of goes, hmm, I like that better. And so <laughs> oh. from then on, it became permanent. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So that's that's my story about I'm in touch. I do that all the time with my wife. You know, she'll say things over and over, and I'm thinking I'm hearing one thing. She, uh, she obviously saying another. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Donna, do you want to start with the the, the fan submitted questions? Um, yes. Well, so let me start with um, a fan named Becky Friday. She is wrote, that her real name? Uh, Hi, Becky. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a real name or not. Okay. Um, and she had more of a comment than a question. She said, I would like to tell him that I still get chills when I hear him play the sax on All Mixed Up and to thank him for the music that has played an intricate part of my life. Much love to Greg Hawks. Oh, wow, thank you, Becky. Thank That's you so nice. much. Mm-hmm. I would also like to say that I still get chills when I hear his uh, lead keys part in um, It's All I Can Do. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad he hated it so much. That's a fan yeah. favorite, I hear. Yeah. Actually, it's my favorite song, Greg, just wow. to throw that out there and give you a big wow. guilt trip. 
All right. Poor Greg. He didn't know he was going to be abused when he came on. Well, you know what blows my mind? When when I was listening to that song, especially in my teen years, did I ever think I'd have the opportunity to to put a guilt trip on Greg (laughs) later in life? Life, folks. Okay, so we have Laura Rogers DeYoung, who is writing. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, yeah. Be a huge fan of Godzilla. I'd like to uh, talk to him about Japanese monster movies. Uh, she wants to know if you still like them, and are there any favorites? Boy, uh, Monster Zero is one of my favorites. Uh, that that starred Nick Adams as... as what was it? Was he an astronaut or just, I don't know. He was sort of, sort of in charge of, uh, besides, and that sort of had appearances, I think, with Godzilla and Ghidra, the three-headed flying mm-hmm. monster. <laughs> and, and I forget who else. Plus there was this monster zero. So that's a good one. Uh, but, but, uh, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm always fascinated by that whole style. Of uh, of the Jap- you know those Japanese you know sci-fi movies mm-hmm. uh, and 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 I started collecting little you know metal robots and stuff when the cars played in Japan. In yes. 1980, right? Mm-hmm. Panorama tour we mm-hmm. went to Japan, and uh, that sort of got me on that robot collecting kick for a while. Do you still have those? I still have many, and <laughs> and uh, I've sold some, and and but I've still got quite a few. I got to admit. <laughs> Do you have a room, a, a robot room? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so not quite that bad. <laughs> yeah, I I mean not that I couldn't fill a room. Just... My my personal favorite is, uh, and it's been titled other things. In different languages, but is War of the Gargantuas. Wow. I really, really like that one. It's got, um, my gosh, I can't, his name is on the tip of my tongue. He was an American actor who was into musicals. He was in Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Um, but he's in there and he plays the scientists and so forth. Wow. But that was just one that was always seemed to be on a lot on the midnight movies in my wow. neck of the woods and, <laughs> and was a, a favorite growing up. So I actually have that one on DVD. Wow. Sorry. Donna, I recommend it highly to oh, you. Oh, gee. Okay, I'll put that on my list. All right, great. <laughs> After I rewatched that zombies movie that you told me to watch that I didn't like. I don't know which one that was. <laughs> the one with, yes, you do. The one with Woody Harrelson. Oh, yeah, Zombieland. you oh, got to get it. Zombieland, in yeah. I don't know about Excellent. that. Um, but speaking of movies and TV shows and things like that, Greg, there's a yes. photo uh, that you Either you or Elaine posted kind of a while ago, and um, let's see, somebody asked a question about it. Was it Becky Broderick, I think? Becky uh, asked, can Greg give us the backstory on that photo of him and Ben messing around on the set of Battlestar Galactica? Oh, wow. That was when the Cars played, it might have been the Candio tour, but the Cars played at... uh, uh, the Universal Amphitheater, okay. and and we were on. We got to do a tour of the Universal back lot, and so they had a couple of the places where they filmed Battlestar Galactica. So uh, that's right, and they had these like fake boulders. <laughs> so you know you could they were you know whatever they were paper mache or something, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, so they were like very light, and you could like hold them up and pretend, you know, you were throwing them at each other, and and uh, <laughs> yeah. So so that's that's why we were there. Uh, it was sort of we just had some. I forget whether they just sort of took us around on a tour, you know, sort of before the show. It seems like I that remember something like that. Yeah. But, uh, but think, yeah, that was that was fun to do. I think Elaine took that picture. Yeah, do you remember? She took she took a lot of pictures. Was she, did she tour with you all the time? Did she go with you? It, 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 no, just from time to time. Mm. Uh, and 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 she would wait and come to the good cities. Well, not nice. <laughs> <laughs> the good. 
that sounds so elitist. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you guys You're played in my town, and I'm pretty darn sure Elaine wasn't here. Oh, man. <laughs> Didn't keep me away. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I like I can I remember that you can see her in the footage of Live Aid and you know she Oh was yeah, in, yeah. She yeah, she London. took some good pics of Live Aid. Mhm. Yeah, so I was always curious about that if if she you know stayed on the tour cuz you guys didn't have kids right away, right? No, and Danny and Ian are till uh till in the 90s so the cars were Yeah. had well done with their that whole, you know, first right era. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Dave, you're up next. Hey, all right. So this is from uh, Susan McNulty, and she would like to know if there are any plans to write a book. The cars remain such a mystery. Well, I can answer that one, Susan. Donna Sweet Purple June's going to write a book for me. Oh, one. Dave. Right, Donna? Well, why? This is the perfect time for you to say, hey, Greg, I'm going to be writing a book in two or three <laughs> years. Would, could I interview you? <laughs> well, I would love to write a book about the cars. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess, Greg, she's asking if you're going to be writing a book about your experiences with the cars. I, you know, I think about it from time to time, uh, that, but that doesn't mean that I've actually started working on one. So, mm-hmm. you know, I guess that's the difference between thinking about doing something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have other people approached you about it, Greg? I mean, especially with Rick's passing, I think. No, no. Uh, but the the oh, one book that we have is uh, Frozen that? Fire. The gold scene. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That came out in 85. Wow. And holy moly, the prices of that book on eBay are incredible. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and then Philip I, Kamen did one with Peter Goddard. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was after Heartbeat City, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he was, he was a, a, a very good photographer. Because yeah. I was I was a bit you know more photo book, but but he's a, a very good photographer. I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's got some great hey. shots. Yeah. Now do, is is in Frozen Fire is that with a bet? Does or mm-hmm. does that have a, a yes. bet? Yes. Roberts' pictures. Okay. Yeah. No, she's yeah. great too. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, she came she came on our, on our tour of uh, our first European tour and mm-hmm. England stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Her photos are all over the place. They're iconic. That's that's right. And she took those shots, like uh, some in New York too. I remember. Mm-hmm. Out on the street. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Yes. The one, the one with the jogger going that's right. by. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's right. That's yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Her that's... name um, and yeah, Philip came in, and then of course Paul McAlpine and Lynn. Oh Holt. yeah, yeah, Paul Mc. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It is where he did the uh, shots on panorama, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, shots with the shadows of her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He yeah. was he he was the first one that, um, at least to my knowledge, when he started posting things on Twitter, he posted the picture of you holding the keyboard. And I had never oh, seen that before. Oh, right. The alternate shots. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had some great stuff. I know. I like that picture. I, I had forgotten. <laughs> I think they had to dump that idea when they tried to get David to hold the whole drum set up. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he might have he might have had some alternates like with a syndrome or something. I can't yeah. remember. I don't know. Hmm. The other photographer I always think of with the cars is Lynn Goldsmith. Oh yeah, she I yeah I like her a lot too. Yeah, she did some good ones too. Yeah yeah. <clears throat> okay, Dave, you got another question? Um, sure. Uh, this is from our buddy Harold Strassler. Hey Harold. Hi Harold. Harold is a super fan of this podcast, Greg. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said I, like I would it. like. <laughs> oh yeah, I would like to know if there's any possibility. If there would be a deluxe door to door. Wow. If you know wow. any, anything about that, you know, because it just stopped. Yeah, that's right. Uh, up, it went through Heartbeat City, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Uh, but, well, you know, I haven't talked to anybody really since Rick died. Mm. Uh, I mean, I've talked to Elliot, but as far as. You know, sort of what what kind of uh, cars things may be in development or or 
I just said, I, I don't know of any offhand and I haven't heard of any. I've got a couple of possibilities in mind, but I've got to, you know, I've got to talk to management and et cetera. Hmm. Yeah. There's a, he, he also asked about, uh, and we brought, I think the, we brought this up before in the last podcast about a, a reissue of Niagara Falls. Oh yeah. Yeah. That I got to do. Mm, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been on my list for Aww. far too long. <laughs> <laughs> I need to set a deadline is where I need to do. Ooh. Yes. Do you need me uh, to nag you? Two weeks. Yeah. Oh, two weeks. <laughs> oh. Um, okay, Darlene. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Darlene Wolak Olson asks. Uh, any video, is there any video of the cars in the recording studio or in the creative process? Wow. Boy, not too much that I'm aware of. Uh, wow. Um, I, not really. Hmm. Yeah. It's not like these days where you just, you know, set your phone down and, you know, you've got a video of the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, Boy, you know, I don't think there is much. Yeah. Uh, Do you know what really brought that thought up for me was when um, we got the, the Candio monitor mixes that, that were out there and just hearing the progression of a song coming together. And then you just you would love to see video of all that, you know, uh -huh. that whole process. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, I can't think of anything like that the one for me that it makes me think of is remember on the expanded edition when they put out the demo of shake it up oh which i love i love ben and rick are both singing it and it just sounds like a frat party i mean it is oh, so yeah. hilarious <laughs> yeah yeah i like that version too <laughs> it'd be great if there was and, more of that yeah, yeah i know it's funny i think i think the tape for that was like in my basement <laughs> and and because I had some I I still have some tapes that uh, that I don't even know why I they're in my possession I really shouldn't have them but but those <laughs> but those tapes I sent them to like wherever to Electra Rhino I guess when they were putting that together assuming they were just going to keep them because you know but they sent them back so then <laughs> so then I said I don't know so. Because, because the you know most of the cars masters are either at Electra, or or uh, some the cars have a storage facility somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> uh, like one of those Iron Mountain things, you know. <laughs> uh, and I don't know what kind of tapes you know Rick has had. Mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know, his, or were in his possession in his basement in yeah. his own uh, personal archives. <laughs> well, that, that reminded me of something else. Um, and I can't remember, so I think somebody else asked this question too, but um, it made me think about videos, making the cars videos, the creative process and, and coming up with the ideas. And um, what was that like? What do you have? Do you have any specific memories of those video making days? Yeah, I mean, the one that I liked the most was the one for You Might Think, which is still my favorite. Uh, we did that uh, uh, with Jeff Stein and, and Charlex Studio in New York. Mm -hmm. And it was all, uh, you know, it was all sort of done with blue screen and, and you know, piecing it together. And, and it was just a... I, enjoyed the process. I thought it was really fun. And uh, the Warhol one, the Andy Warhol uh, <laughs> Hello Again uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, How about Panorama? And, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. The spy film uh, spoof. That's that, No, I, because <laughs> that was directed by Jer Jerry Casales from Devo. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> that he and Touch and Go, both he uh, both of those. Mm -hmm. uh, but but the Panorama one was fun. I like that one. That's yeah. my favorite. Uh, that that yeah. was like early. That was really one of our first videos, really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think. Who came up with the story? Do you know? 
Was it I Harry think, or? I, I think it was Jerry. Yeah, he sort of storyboarded it out. And, <laughs> that's a fun one. And, I like that one. But yeah, that's a, that was a good one. I really like that one. <laughs> and and also, yeah, I'm sure you guys probably know this one, but uh, 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 in the elevator, when Rick gets in the elevator, the guy pushing the buttons is Roy Thomas Baker. Yes, RTD. Yes, he makes a, <laughs> a cameo appearance. Love it. <laughs> Are you in touch with him ever? You know, I I haven't been. I do know that we sort of invited him to the to uh, the Hall of Fame show mm-hmm. but uh i don't i don't know why he couldn't make it but. yeah we we consider him the sixth car yeah i love roy mm-hmm. but yeah. but no i haven't uh i haven't talked to him in probably several years now Aww. i well, know neither have i <laughs> neither have i <laughs> <laughs> but he, he retweets me a lot yeah. <laughs> that's pretty awesome <laughs> Okay, so, uh, God, I've lost my play. Oh, here we go. This is from John Rudge, R-U-D-G-E. Hey, John. It says, hello, Greg. Have you oh, ever okay. done an instructional book or DVD on how you play keyboards? No, I have not. Uh, probably no plans to do so. <laughs> it's funny, but I used to sort of describe my approach to synthesizers as just twiddling knobs, <laughs> but but there's there's a, and there's a lot of truth to that. It's like you know when I was uh, first playing around with them, you know you you start turning knobs and see what oh what you know this does you know makes the sound you know do that or the wow or, or, and so then you know after after a while you start remembering you know what they all do and then it starts to make a certain amount of sense and and uh you know you sort of get or at least i you know would find that i would get a little approach sort of little favored approaches to sort of the type of sounds that i liked Mm. uh and and i still you know still to this day i prefer the old analog sense with the knobs on them to you know the digital ones and even though i use digital ones and like you know the software recreations uh still as far as like sound shaping for me it, you know that whole like sort of a tactile mm. sense of of like turning the knobs well that leads into a question from um tim belgard okay he- hi tim our friend Tim asks, Greg, how have you kept your mini Korg working all these years? Wow, just lucky. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it just works surprisingly well. I used it last night with letters to Cleo. Awesome. Uh, uh, and and it's still and it's still working. Uh, <laughs> and it's been a long time since I've had to have anybody uh, look at it. It's a little quirky sometimes, like the, the portamento button or the glide. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes sticks, or I'll shut it off, but it, it'll keep gliding even <laughs> though it, it, it oughtn't. And I do, have, I do have a couple of spares, but of course I've got a, an emotional attachment to my you know <laughs> to my first one which is you know it was my first synth ever so wow so it's what it's like a it's, it's a 45 year old synthesizer these days that's amazing mm-hmm. and still yeah, in like, play yeah yeah that's awesome well it, that because there was another question regarding synthesizers our good friend Kurt Gaber who um i think not very long ago a while ago i said um, you and Elaine, a little package, and there was a sticker in there of you that was actually designed by Kurt Gaber, and he yes. um, he was at the Hi, Rock Kurt. Hall. He was at the Rock Hall, and he's the one that had the truck that was decked out with all sorts of ah. cars, decals, and photos of you guys and stuff. It was awesome. Um, wow. But Kurt says, uh, well, he has a comment first. He says, um, having Greg actively participate in social media sure is refreshing and satisfying. Thank you, Greg. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. It's, I know I do it more when I'm traveling because mm. uh, it gives me it gives me something to do. Uh, 
when I'm when I'm especially like when I'm doing the Todd tours, it gives me like a little project for the day to go out and like try to, you know, find some interesting things just to <laughs> sort of keep, you know, yeah, just a little like a, a little photo diary. Mm. And then uh but then when I'm home I tend to uh ignore my page for a while. <laughs> Well, so Kurt asks, too, he says, what is Greg's favorite preset patch sound on the Roland D50 synthesizer? Was there one wow. that was the aha, this sound I love right out of the box? Anything like hmm. that? No, not right out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, although I pro I'm sure I have used a couple of the presets for sure <laughs> from the D50. But there was one... There's one that had a particularly nice fluty sound, which which I liked because it was sort of that Mellotron, like Strawberry Fields Forever type fluty sound. Mm. But I think the preset had that fluty sound plus another sound layered in with it. And you had to go in and like change the balance so that it was just all the fluty sound. So I remember that, and I'm sure that I used it somewhere. D50 would have been more, uh, the boy, probably just door to door. It was sort of later, later mm -hmm. era. I, th I think even after Heartbeat City, I could, I, th oh yeah, because Heartbeat City, was just that's when like the DX7 was new. Uh, wow! So D50 was definitely after that. D50 just would have been on the uh, uh, yeah the door to door mm. record. I okay. And our friend Chuck Walker. Hi Chuck. Chuck would like to know um, what your favorite song is on each album. Ooh, tough one. <laughs> really tough one. Uh, uh, first album. Uh, the first one that comes off the top of my head is just what I needed mm -hmm. on Candio. The first one off the top of my head is let's go. Uh, what's next panorama. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the song panorama itself oh, nice. uh, was always one of my favorites. Yeah. I, I, I always thought that was an interesting song and I always, I always liked that one. Uh, what's next? The shake, shake it up. It up. It. How about, oh, I'm sorry. How, shake how, it up. How about dream away is one of my favorites. Uh, I read a thing where you were, said you really liked um, the lyric chicken counters fill your bones. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> well, well it, it made me think about smoking pot, the fill your bowls. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if that was a real, the actual reference or not, but you know, yeah. we're all, open to our own interpretation exactly <laughs> <laughs> and then heart heartbeat city uh, i'll say you might think uh, uh, uh and and then boy door to door i don't know if i have i don't know to tell you the truth it's been so long i i so i don't know about door to door and then i'll even move like way way into a move like this my favorite song was uh it hits me is that the yes. name of it? Yes. Me, yeah. See, I think that should have been the, the first single. Yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. I think it would have been a much better choice than, than Sad Song, personally. Hmm. <laughs> to stir up to stir up some more controversy. There we go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we've got um, Gino Garcia. Okay. Gino Garcia wants to know. Oh, would you agree that Panorama has a different feel or sound? If so, any reason? Was it a change in synthesizers, or did you use a certain one more? You know, I, I do agree that it has a, a, def, a different sound to it. We were using C, uh, synthesizers more, or I guess, and but we were also, I think probably that album was all sort of recorded to like drum machine parts uh so it was like unlike the first album which was all played live and most of candio i'd say too panorama was all you know had some kind of like click either we would record a drum machine and then play to that but but that's where 
you know, the timing starts becoming very metronomic mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, and there's 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 arguments for both. And and uh, at the time, that's that's sort of the way that recording was going. And also, I think for the cars, that was sort of, you know, that's the direction we were going, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for better or for worse. And let's see. The other thing I'll say about Panorama is that, uh, OK, so the first album was recorded at Air Studios in London. Uh, arguably, to me, that's still the best sounding Cars album uh, from from my perspective. They were all those first four albums with Roy were all recorded on his Stevens 40 track machine. So 40 tracks on two inch tape. And then we recorded mm -hmm. Candio was recorded at Cherokee in Los Angeles, uh, another studio that Roy liked. Uh, to me, it the sound of it just sounds a little bit thinner mm -hmm. than than the first album. So that's that's I don't know that's just my observation. Uh, the the Panorama album. We started it recording it at the power station in New York, uh, which had its own unique sort of very wood, wood, woody sound. Uh, but Roy, in particular, did not get along well with the studio. I don't know whether it was. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> after we had worked there for a while and recorded some tracks there, we ended up moving back out to Los Angeles and back to Cherokee Next, for that yeah. album. Hmm. And then, uh, 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 so some some tracks we re-recorded in Los Angeles, like from the from you know just started over, and and some things are still remnants uh, from the power station recordings that wow. we just you know overdubbed to, and I I really can't remember what is what offhand hmm. but i think we did do a lot of re-recording in los angeles uh and then shake it up is the one that we did at synchro sound in boston uh and then oh yeah then then uh uh for heartbeat city we went back to london uh to battery studios to work with mutt lang on that one <laughs> And that, of course, you know, is an iconic story in terms of it being this grueling six months, you know. Yeah, 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 it was. <laughs> did you have to call him um, Robert John Mutt Lang or did you just call him Mutt? Just Mutt. <laughs> and so, yeah, he was very, uh, from what we've read and understand, he was just relentless of, you know, tweaking and redoing over and over and over trying to get the perfect yeah. sound. No, as I like to say, there was no detail so small that Mutt wouldn't have to <laughs> spend days laboring over it. <laughs> wow. Elliot said in an interview once that he thought that, um, I can't remember his exact wording, but um, the idea that he felt door-to-door -door was not the best thing to do after Heartbeat City, that there should have been more of a break, maybe. Um, do you feel like that? Do you have regrets about Door to Door? Yeah, well, I, for me, it's the Lost Cars album, because I never listened to it. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't listened to it since we recorded it. Oh, um, wow. And, uh, but you know what, I'll tell you, I, I haven't listened to Move Like This particularly either you know i mean not you know not that uh, not that uh i i to, to me they're they're both somewhat unsatisfying but door to door in particular it was just it it was it was uh you know for a lack of a better word there were there were just bad vibes around yeah. uh, uh you know there was a lot of tension you know people weren't getting along particularly at that point uh so yeah it was it was it was a pretty unpleasant project um well that leads you know when you were saying you haven't listened to those albums one of our questions from one of our listeners our friend chuck nolan uh-huh chuck asks greg do you have a vinyl record collection and if so 
What are some of your most cherished or most rare records? Wow. Uh, I, you know, I, I still have some records. Let me think. I still have a pretty, well, it's, it's a pretty small collection, but, you know, still like a collection of like electronic synthesizer records and like, you know, all the craft work records on vinyl and, and uh, a lot of those German synthesizer guys like uh, Klaus Schultz and the Tangerine Dream guys and, and spin-off projects and uh, just just oddball, you know, electronic sound, you know, <laughs> things. I don't know. Got any Spike uh, Jones in there? Yeah, I've got some, I've got a couple Spike Jones things, but they're just <laughs> They, you know, nothing rare. They're just sort of like the Spike Jones uh, greatest hits, so to speak. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I love Spike Jones. <laughs> I know we do too. So here's one from uh, from Craig McGuire. Which, by the way, um, Greg, if you yes. ever need any kind of cars memorabilia, you need to contact Craig McGuire. I okay. guarantee he has it. Okay. <laughs> He's the king of memorabilia. Uh, he wants to know, will any of the recorded concerts ever be released? Like there's one um, at the Spectrum in Philly right? that's, uh, right. that's recorded. Um, you can see on YouTube and so forth. See, I, think, I, I, would, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And, and also there's a lot from the pan, Panorama oh, uh, love tour, to see a Panorama too. Concert. Oh, yeah. Or, or that people assume because of the um, footage from – the panorama era on the cars unlocked DVD that came out, that there was just possibly a whole concert. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's see. That's something that I need to talk to management about and see what there is and what should be, you know, tidied up and, and made available. Do you guys get to, do you have a say in that kind of thing? I mean, do you get to Uh, say, Hey, I want a panorama concert released. Let's do it. Well, it's, it's, I mean, everybody's open to suggest anything like that. I, I think it's just, you know, if everybody wants to do it, great. It's funny, you know, it's, it's funny. I don't know, I don't know quite how all that works. Hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm thinking even legally. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, it'd be great. If, it'd be great if it was. That's our vote. Especially we'll Panorama <laughs> is my favorite era and my favorite album, and I would love a full Panorama concert to be put out. And it, it would wow. sell like hotcakes. That would be fun. That'd be, would be so fun. It'd be awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I could. Uh, I could also insert in Annie Sublet. Um, Ooh, okay. Was saying that she enjoyed all the backstage video on the from the Cars Unlocked. Oh, uh, she yeah. liked it. She'd like to ask you, Greg, if you could share a crazy story that happened on tour. I know that's kind of putting you on the spot, but wow. <laughs> a crazy story. But you mentioned that like backstage stuff. Yeah. It was, that came about because the cars sort of bought a video camera. But even back then, a, a portable video camera was something that you had to like sort of lug on your shoulder. Yes. And it took like, it was it like V it might, it might've been like VHS size tapes or yeah. some equally as bulky, you know, some kind of, and uh, we all took turns, you know, recording, <laughs> you know, or filming with it, whatever. Uh, and as well as, uh, we used it to, we recorded a lot of the shows just with like a single stationary camera, you know, like on the side of the stage or something. So there's probably that, you know, Rick probably has them. Uh, yeah. Mm, that vault. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, that's, I think at the beginning of the Cars Unlocked DVD, it, it has a mention about, the video not being top quality because that's just the way it was. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think it and that, was yeah, that's like, the way yeah. it was. Well, thinking about backstage stories, I came across a um, an article not very long ago where Elliot told a story about how at the end of a concert he, you know, was going to be all edgy and decided to smash his guitar at the end, not realizing that they still had another song to play, and so he was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> Oops. Oops, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he was. He was like, oh, <laughs> that was a fail. <laughs> oh, how fun. Um, so yeah, could you, and well, and also one of the questions too is, you know, um, from a, a friend named Bryce, did you guys hang out with the bands that you toured with? Did you, do you have memories of, um, you know, funny stories or crazy things that happened with other band members from different bands? Or, or, uh I remember it seemed like Nick Lowe was one of the more social guys that we hung out with when when we did a string of shows with Nick Lowe. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny when I, I when I was in London this past year with Todd, Dave Gregory from XTC came to the show and they had they had opened a series of shows for the cars. Uh, so it was nice to see him. Uh Let's see. Oh, I well the motels. Uh, mm. I, 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 Marty, Marty is, <laughs> is. You know, I'm still friends with Marty uh, from the motels. Marty Gerard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and, it's the and, uh, great, and Martha's great. You know. Was was the Utopia opening for you guys at one I point? Think we were opening for them. Oh, you were opening for them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there was one big show. Where, where it was like the Cars and Cheap Trick and Utopia. And then there was another one where it was like the Cars and Utopia and Fleetwood Mac, I that think. That was the or, World Series of Rock in okay. Cleveland. Oh, okay, okay. I, I wrote an article about that not very long ago. That was, yeah, 1978 World Series of Rock. Aha, uh -huh, right. Wow. Right. Yeah, you should write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's there you go. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we we have a, just a couple more questions for you. Okay. Uh, the first one is from our our friend, good podcast friend, uh, Judy Matthews. She's our legal counsel, isn't she? She is our legal counsel. <laughs> uh, she says, uh, speaking as someone who is only two weeks older than Greg, okay, wow. and loving retirement. Uh, does he think he'll ever retire? If he does decide to step back from music, I can't picture him sitting around binging on HGTV. <laughs> that's, that's that's probably what I'm going to be forced to do. Uh, yeah. What would I, he do? There's certain shows that I like watching on HGTV. I like the ones where they're like a, where where they're like island hopping, where the beach front bargain <laughs> hunters uh, yeah. all the, like caribbean ones or hawaii life all where they're like basically all the ones where they're like getting you know ocean front homes those are the ones i like to watch uh so i'm sorry i i i got sidetracked what was the uh so know, oh, what's retirement. your yeah if you have plans on retiring oh uh, well i mean Probably. <laughs> I, I don't know when. The thing I do really enjoy, I, I have come to enjoy performing, uh, you know, live performances, probably, a lot, you know, more than when I was in the cars. I've just come to, you know, I've, I've come to enjoy it. So I, I'm at the point where as long as I keep getting asked, you know, I'll, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> the, the kind of thing you can do is, you know, replacing me on the podcast. That's a good, uh, that's, that's a right. good retirement. That yeah. Yeah. Waiting, waiting. <laughs> oh, I, I can tell you one of the things that I've enjoyed the most that you've done outside the cars is are the ukulele mm -hmm. um, performances. Ah, ah, yes. I haven't done too much lately. Although when I, when I was, have been doing the shows with Eddie Japan. I've been doing oh yeah like an opening slot with the ukulele. So oh so I'm I'm still still honing my act so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I think on the last podcast that you were on, we talked about the possibility of you doing a Cars Uke album because you oh, had done the right. Beatles Uke, you know. And right, so we right. thought, oh, you should yeah. do a Cars Uke. So you're kind of positioning yourself for that by doing these um, yeah. small sets with Eddie Japan. Yeah, yeah. Now you've got you've got two weeks to get Niagara Falls re-released and <laughs> Cars Uke. Right. Okay. We'll and, give you con three and contact Cars Management about a Panorama DVD. Yeah. Okay. I hope you're, you're writing all this down, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Well, and about those Eddie Japan concerts, um, our friend Alan Fields, he lives in Colorado, but he flew to oh, Boston. Oh, yeah, yeah. You remember him? I do, I do. Yeah, he said he got to meet you, and he um, posted several videos from yes, that show he, on your group. So. I remember speaking with him. Yeah. Like both yeah. Well, and I know you got to meet Joe Milliken, too. Um, and yeah. Judy's, one of Judy's questions, too, was what do you think of Joe's book? I know you got to chat with him a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Uh, you know, because I, <laughs> I, I keep being surprised by how many people that I know that he talked to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did like quite a few Aunt interviews. Riddle and my <laughs> friend Fusby and stuff. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, they're all quoted in there. Yeah. It's funny, Fusby was... Fusby was at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. co coincidentally enough. <laughs> yeah, I think you had told us about how he oh. uh, he got oh, the yeah. tickets I from. Oh yeah, talked about that. Okay. That's yeah, good. he got tickets from that one guy that wasn't able to Paul go. Paul Allen. Yeah, yeah, Paul yeah. Allen. That's right. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So you have to refer to podcast number what was it? Thirty. Number thirty-one. 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 For that. <laughs> Well, I confess, I did just listen to it again, just so I could make sure and not ask you the same stuff. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to be prepared. Okay, so I think last question, I think, from our fans. This is from John Craven. And John says, I would love to hear about his early musical influences, and was there a significant event in his childhood that led him to a career in music? Yes, I mean, really, for me, the significant event was hearing I Want to Hold Your Hand on the radio when I was, what, like 11. Uh, it's just I, I, just when I first heard the Beatles. It's, it's like, it really was like one of those aha moments, like, wow, sort of ever since it was, you know, I would think about, like, like wow, that's what I want to do. Uh, you know, so they were they were definitely the big influence. And then, I mean, besides the Beatles, I was influenced, especially early, uh, like by Frank Zappa, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, his more orchestral uh, music and, and the way he would just sort of juxtapose things from <laughs> sort of like a 50s doo-wop tune into like a little symphonic thing into like some surf guitar uh and and then with like crazy little vocal you know recitation little skits <laughs> and things in between and uh and then you know sort of electronic music and craft work was a big influence Todd was one of my musical heroes so you know that's a funny full circle in mm -hmm. itself oh wow that's interesting. I was going to say the the cool thing I always thought uh, was cool about Kraftwerk was um, the whole side of the album being Autobahn. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Or then it just blew me away. Express. Yeah. Relentless, over and over. Like, you know, for a whole side. <laughs> yeah. It was you know it was like their their the minimalism. I guess. <laughs> and and the repetition, the 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 sort of hypnotic droney effect you know i i love that whole that stuff all right but greg we we thank you for being on our podcast again okay well cheers and, <laughs> <laughs> and as our buddy kurt gaber says we we really do appreciate your your role in the in the fandom and on social media and doing our little podcast <laughs> okay uh, I'm, I'm sure that this episode will get uh, just as many listens as as episode 31 we'll see if we okay. can we can break it. 1.6K. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Hope to see you live someday. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to. Po you know, post it up when I when I know. But sometimes I like the element of surprise. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Have a good rest of the day, Greg. Thanks. You too. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye. All right, Donna. Yeah, fantastic to take all those uh, questions from our Fanorama friends. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, we, we got in quite a few. If, if we didn't get your question in, I, we apologize. Uh, that's a lot of questions. That's <laughs> a whole lot, lot of questions. questions. 
great. A lot more questions than um, emails we've ever gotten. I know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Well, and it's just so hard because I could just talk to Greg forever. And I, yeah. you know, he's sitting out there on the porch and <laughs> in the chill. And I have to remember, you know. He doesn't want to sit out there for six hours and answer my no. innocuous questions. He doesn't. That is true. That is true. So um, it, it seems like we've just gone through um, a marathon session of the Midnight Scroll. That's yes. What, but it was a uh, it was a darn good um, episode to come back to. Yeah. Like I said, I have no idea how long it's been since um, we did our last episode, but. I'm happy we got another one in. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's a good one. I agree. I agree. What a blessing for Greg to spend time with us. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. All right. So before we go, I wanted to share um, something with you. I didn't want to do it with Greg. Greg on the line. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> now I'm nervous. I For my birthday. My brother and I always get each other iTunes gift certificates. Okay. And this is something that goes back many years in the fact that if I bought myself $50 worth of music off of iTunes, my wife would kill me. Right. Same thing with him. If he, so we came up with this ingenious idea that we would get each other $50 iTunes gift certificates <laughs> for each other's birthday. And then it just evens out. So – my brother gives me my, my $50 iTunes gift card, and, you know, it, it gets harder and harder for me to find music on there because, you know, everything that I've liked that I want to have digitally, I've either, you know, ripped it off the CDs or, um, you know, it's just I'm just running out of things to get. I'm not into the new music and so forth. So I was just uh, just kind of bored, just kind of searching things in iTunes, and I searched the cars just to see what they had available and how stuff was selling. And I come across by Sea Turtle Harmonic, and it's just what I needed. And it's it was kind of listed as the car's classical. Okay. All right? Okay. So this this album that's put out. Um, by Sea Turtle Harmonic in 2019. So who knows? I personally, I think it's some teenage kid who had some good equipment <laughs> and recorded himself playing car songs on on the piano. But the the funny thing about it is is that it sounds like a lounge singer would play. You really? Know? Yeah. So <laughs> so I wanted to play a little bit this for you. We'll see if this. Oh, good. Uh, Let's see if this will come through okay. on my mind. So here we go. Um, I'll just play this and let you figure out, uh, you know, what song it is. Okay. Hey, how's everybody doing there tonight? <laughs> it's me, Jackie. I'm your entertainer for the evening. <laughs> here at the Motel 8 Lounge, Boston, Mass. We're letting the good times roll. <laughs> Am I right? Yes, for sure. Or yeah, or you're in the elevator at the. Tonight's special is lobster and crab. Again. <laughs> Again. Where are you from, there, ma'am? <laughs> she must be a little bit high. <laughs> oh. Ooh, let's get crazy. It's just what we needed, people. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Attention, music lovers. There's a puke green Toyota with its lights on in the parking lot. <laughs> it's like, what is this? <laughs> it's got it's got four songs. Um, Drive, which is just hideous. Um, Good Times Roll. Just What I Needed is the best. And Best Friend's Girl, it's hard to tell that it's Best Friend's Girl. Let me play Best Friend's Girl for you. Okay. <laughs> Yo. Wow. <laughs> Dude, I, I can't take it anymore. Um, it was it was a three ninety nine download for those four songs. Okay. So I played I paid a buck a piece for those just to have them. Well, um, an interesting take. <laughs> yeah, interesting take. You know, you just want to have it. But 
that just leads me to think that I know lots of bands have done truly classical pieces. Well, like having like reworking Drive for that, right. uh, however they whatever the name of that that uh, album was. That would be really cool. Um, you know, and it also goes along with the fact that we you know tell tell Greg Cox that you know a Cars Uke would be awesome because yeah. he has all these layers and layers of ukulele. You know, that kind of stuff is cool, but this is just like <laughs> this is just like Billy. Billy doing his piano practice in the afternoon. <laughs> like, well, yeah, it's it's a different sound. But as always, I love that people are into the music enough to you know, to pay attention to it, to play it, to try to do something, I guess, yeah. right? Some, uh, something tells me this was put, because this is just newly put out. This was put out because of, of the passing of Mr. Okasik. You know, uh, there's, there's lots of stuff out now. You know what I mean? Yes. So. And in fact, I want to talk about that. Some hot sort of. Yes, because recently, um, oh, I'm going to try to not get furious. Furious. But there was a book put out by a guy named Vincent Price called The Cars that came out. Wait, wait, Vincent Price? It's not the same Vincent Price. In fact, it's probably not even the dude's real name. Well, of course not. He's dead. Well, yeah. Okay, you're, okay, don't try to distract me because. I won't distract your anger. (laughs) Okay, it's. I, I wrote a thing about it. So this is just for the people who might have missed it. And if you want to go to my blog, which is www.sweetpurplejune.wordpress.com, I wrote an article mm-hmm. called Bootleg Book because this just makes me so angry. And this is just the biggest cash grab ever. This guy, Vincent Price, put out this book. And there's really a whole series of them that he did. But it's um it's called The Cars. And it is a series of photographs. Of course, they ordered it because I thought, oh, you know. What's this? It's a series of photographs and with a little bit of text. All of the photographs are ones that have already been published. There is no, there are no photo credits. There are no, um, there's no explanation or permission given to use all these photos. The text is literally cut and paste from three or four different articles that are online they are just cut and paste and put one after the other with no credits, no no explanation whatsoever. There's no publisher information. There's no author information. There's no copyright information. There is nothing on this book. 20 bucks on Amazon. And it's still on there. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. And this guy, I mean, it was released, uh, I think it was put on Amazon beginning of October. Yeah. And, um, and of course, when it first came out, Several of us in the in the Fanorama bought it because, hey, it was a book about the cars. And then you get it and you just realize it's this slap together, downloaded from the Internet garbage so that someone can make a buck on the focus that's on the cars at that time because of Rick's passing. Yeah. Infuriating. So people do not buy this book. I'm begging you. Do not put money in this person's pocket. It's so wrong. It's so wrong. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Well, and it's like, like uh, I, I forgot to bring this up to Greg. When when Greg had his auctions that he put off selling his memorabilia. Oh, yes. He, they had the all the shirts that were original shirts like Richard and the Rabbits and so forth. Yes. Well, that dirt bag lives near me. He's like 40 minutes away from me. And he's he's trying to sell these shirts for like 500 apiece and, <sighs> you know, that kind of stuff. It's like, dude, why did you even buy – the auction stuff if you're just going to try and rip people off well exactly because it's just a it's a greedy yeah. oh go in 40 minutes go over to his house david go over to his house and <laughs> knock on his door and just ask him point blank what's Dude, your problem what's up? Yeah, yeah yeah what is your major malfunction yeah. yeah well even the dark lord of ordor fell into it he, he had put a couple of uh autograph things one of them being uh, an old VHS of the Heartbeat City album, you know, with all the videos, yes. and it's it's obviously water damaged, and yet he's asking for three hundred or however Seriously? much for it. Oh. Yeah, oh, that it just fries my grits. Yeah, not good. Not good. Not, not good, people. Good. Please, people, buyer beware. 
don't let these guys profit off of this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so question for you. How soon, yes, ma'am. How soon uh, are you going to be cranking out that uh, Christmas CD that I sent you a couple years ago? <laughs> That's um, coming up. Have, you know what? You, you, you think I've probably you know thrown it under a couch somewhere or something. <laughs> I have it right here. It's on the shelf. And I'll I'll pull that baby out um, the day after Thanksgiving, like okay. I do my other things. And, you know, I'll get to listening to that because I cannot wait for the Twisted Sister version of Oh, Come All You Faithful that we're yeah. not going to take it. Yeah. No doubt. Awesome. No I just doubt. wanted to make sure you didn't forget. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I think that's a, that about does us for this episode. I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed, uh, you know, hearing a hi from Greg as they had their questions posted. And most importantly, um, we were thinking of you, uh, Brett and Dante mm-hmm. and Eric, um, as we brought you up during the during the the episode. We, we wish you could have been um, on here with us, mm-hmm. but. You know, you can only have so many people on Skype. Mm-hmm. That's the way it is. All right. And, uh, well, we don't know anything about another episode yet, right? We don't have plans for that. Well, oh, I, I have a feeling we're going to be having another episode in a couple weeks. Yay. Oh, yay, yes. Oh, shoot. Yeah. I forgot. I totally wanted to ask Greg about Turbocharge. Yeah, I did, too. <laughs> oh, it popped into my head, and then I... I forgot. Dang it. I want to say, why were you such an angry person? <laughs> <laughs> you don't come off that way in real life. I wanted to say, I loved your leg warmers when you guys were practicing for the Live Aid performance. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, so, my gosh. So looking forward to the release of that movie so people know what the hell we're talking about. I know. Me, there. too. All right, so that's it for us here at Night Thoughts, episode 58. And as always, thank you, Becky. Becky. I forgot the line. I, <laughs> I forgot the oh, I forgot stay fresh, the fucking line. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs> How could I forget that? I don't know, Holy but I was shit. like, Becky. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Should I do that again? Well, yeah. Or is it funny or just, uh, you know, how, how I screwed up? <laughs> All right. So once again, thanks for listening to episode 58, folks. Uh, We'll see you soon. And as always, thank you, Becky, for the line. Stay fresh, cheese bags. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast. Wherever you found us, iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Send us an email for the Midnight Scroll at nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com. As always, Night Thoughts reserves the right to edit or not read an email on the air. You can follow us on Twitter at The Cars Podcast. Grab yourself a podcast t shirt at tpublic.com backslash user backslash night thoughts. All the cool kids are wearing them. Oh, and finally, search for The Cars Night Thoughts on Facebook and join our group page. P.S. I am totally Team Rick. <laughs>